Hey y'all, I'm Scarlett Vixen. And I'm Alice Andrew. And welcome to the Main Stage. Stage. The show where we'll be discussing all the looks and fashion of RuPaul's Drag Race. And we are finally <laughs> at the top eight, girl. This has been Woo! a long time coming. Girl. We still got a couple of episodes. And as you guys can see, we're back from our little uh, yes. vacation. We're back from our vacation, honey. A lot of things have been done that we can't talk about. Maybe a video later for y'all. But it was a good ass time. Yes. I'm glad to be back home, though. We are here, we are refreshed, ready to make some more videos. And speaking of videos, tell them what we did recently. So, if you guys haven't seen already, you know, we did a food challenge video for our fans that aren't, you know, very RuPaul in the know, they aren't very fashion in the know. So we did a little something different for the food challenge video. And we just wanna thank you guys. You guys have really shown that video of support from just commenting and watching the video from texting us individually, messaging us on social media. We really appreciate it. Y'all were looking out and best believe, we have some more coming. Girl, they just like seeing us get tortured. <laughs> Girl, exactly. We're on to y'all. <laughs> so the runway for this episode was the makeover. You know, we've been waiting for this episode and because of COVID, you know, they couldn't really bring anyone in. So the twist was that they had to paint each other over. Yes, and so it'll get a little interesting for the ratings. Of course, we're still gonna rate the girls from one to 10. However, say for example, if I made over Scarlett here, we're gonna be rating myself. So you'll see Scarlett's look, for example, but you're gonna rate me for doing the makeover. Um, so again, the girls will get one from 10. 10 being, yes, bitch, you slayed that makeover. She looked just like you. Yes. Or one bitch, bitch, you're like Willie Lump Lump on the street. Honey, you look like <laughs> Tina Burner. <laughs> Honey, oh. <laughs> or somebody else that you're gonna see in a second. Honey, more on that later. Yes, but um, and of course at the end of it, we're gonna rate the one who did the makeover the best, the Naomi came over the week, and that means she turned her person out. She really made them look like her. So for our first pair, we have Rose and Tina. So first off, we have Rose, who was made over by Tina. So I give Tina a three. I hate this look. <laughs> this look is disgusting. Yeah, but this looks like Tina Burner. Okay, not. okay. Here we go. <laughs> The makeup looks like Tina. The makeup was not good, but it looks like Tina. The hair looks like Tina. You, bitch, you've been wearing red, yellow, and orange this whole damn competition, and you came out here in green and yellow. Ooh. You came out here in green and yellow. Bitch, you should have came here looking like the fucking McDonald's sign. <laughs> um, I did appreciate the reveal, because you know, she is a reveal queen. Jeez. And she went into the red and orange whatever. What happened but... to that gal in the workroom they were talking about, bitch? Girl, I'm saying that gal was sickening. Now, if Rosé came out looking like that, I would have gave it a high score. But, I mean, this is Tina Burner. It's just not what I feel is like quintessential Tina Burner. So that's why I gave her a three. Yeah, I gave this look a five. Um, I wasn't impressed with it. I do, even though Tina was saying how she felt like she really started to get to know Rosé better and started really to like her, I really think she kind of tried to play Rosé a little bit with this look. Because, I mean, we all know, like, granted, Tina doesn't gag anybody on the runway, but she, we have seen some decent looks from her. I mean, the cab driver look, you know, we've seen... I think that's the cab driver look. <laughs> Like, like, so, yeah, you know, we know she's okay with, you know, her aesthetic. And Rosé actually played it off very well. So kudos to Rosé for mm -hmm. embodying that Tina spirit. But as far as Tina transforming her, definitely a four. Girl, I just know uh, Rosé was like, bitch, I want to wear this little orange gown. And Tina Burner said, bitch, that's my finale dress. Exactly. But you know, that's what I was thinking too. That's you know my, finale my finale dress. Finale look. And you ain't, you ain't wearing shit, bitch. So let me put you in this, like, <laughs> 1960s housewife look. Honey. Okay, so now we have Miss Tina Burner, honey, done up and made over by Miss Rose. Baby, Miss Rose did that. Honey, she did that. I've never seen Tina look so good. Honey, she came with the, ah, honey, and the little turns. I said, yes. I gave this look a seven. I love the little outfit, the cute sleeves, or, you know, a little um, texture moment, giving the little outfit a little something more. I really like it, and I'm kudos to Rosé for being a face like that, honey. Cause that is a man. That's a Brett. And honey, she fucking transformed her. That's a Brett, girl. But let's not pretend like Rosé's uh, face is easy to paint. <laughs> honey, that's another man. <laughs> and Tina, she took that from brick to a brick painted with makeup. Girl. Rosé took it from brick to a, a, pebble. a piece of wood. A pebble. <laughs> Took it to a yeah. um, As far as this look, um, I do like it. I think that Rosé did a good job painting her up and everything. However, for me, the, the look was just basic. Um, someone on the, one of the judges was like, you know, this is just like a simple little sexy outfit. So for that, I'm only going to give it maybe a five. Um, when I think of Rosé though, like they said, I think of all the, you know, the ruffles and stuff like that. Blah, 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 blah. So I wish that she would have given Tina something like that. 
Um, I don't know if it's the only outfit that Steven could fit in Rose had. I wasn't gonna say nothing. nothing. That's why I gave it a five. I wasn't gonna say nothing. Uh, but yeah, I just gave this look a five. It wasn't bad, but it didn't wow me. Next up, we have Olivia, and she was made over by Denali. So this look, I didn't mind it. I mean, when she came out on the runway, I knew this was Denali. And I feel like most people would be like, bitch, Denali made you over. So overall, it gave it a seven uh, just for the resemblance. And I actually, I also liked the outfit too. I mean, it was very ice skater. Yeah, it was very ice skater. I also gave it a seven. Um, I love this wig. But I just don't know if Denali should have put this wig on Olivia because that was a Denali staple. Like, bitch, you worked to the workroom, that's what you had on. That was a staple ass wig. Honey, go back to our previous video, when the very first one when they walked in and we talked about that fucking wig when they lip synced. That wig is everything. So I don't know if Denali should have necessarily put it on mm -hmm. Olivia. Um, overall, she does look good. However, I just don't think Olivia brought it to the runway. Like, it was something missing from this yeah. outfit. I don't know if it was like a jewel or a bag or a bitch. Olivia didn't even have ice cakes on, but maybe it was just strictly her delivery because she just wasn't giving it to me. Yeah. Um, I also thought the whole skating on the runway with the heels, that was so stupid, bitch. Either come out in skates or don't. Girl, look like a whole man trying to do that. First of all, before I get into it. Tell us, girl. Justice before my bitch denied it. I am beyond pissed off. I'm over these fucking producers. Just like my girl Scarlett always says, I smell a stunt. I'm over it. First you get rid of Kimishi Ma, then you get rid of fucking La La Ree, then you get, who else they got rid of bitch that we, a horror on the UK, girl. and now you're getting rid of Denali just so you can see the drama that goes on with Olivia and the other girl. Bitch, I'm pissed off. Everybody in their right mind knows that Denali shouldn't have went home, yeah. and I'm over it. Now, period. Period. Her. Now to get into the fucking look. I hate this look. <laughs> What you give it, girl? Girl, I gave this look like a three. I'm so, and you know, not, I'm giving it a three based on how Olivia dressed Denali. Denali delivered it as well as I thought she could have. I wish the wig would have maybe been like darker because I don't think this red hair looks good on her skin tone. Mm -hmm. So I wish it would have been darker or something. But come on, like this, like give us something. This dress is very basic. This is very quick drag. This is very mini challenge. And so I was very disappointed with this look and very disappointed in Olivia as well. Yeah, I agree. I gave this look a four. Like, if Denali came out, I would not have thought, oh, Olivia did her makeup. But then again, that's also hard because Olivia doesn't really have, like, a signature style. Mm -hmm. She just wears, like, she, she wears anything. She's like a chameleon. Mm -hmm. So I think that this pair definitely had it the hardest in, in terms of, like, trying to replicate each other. Uh, but yeah, justice for my girl Denali. Tina Burner should have gone home 15 episodes ago. <laughs> and if she does not go home next week, bitch, we're gonna have a problem. Right. Next up, we have Simone, and she was made over by Utica. And bitch, this pairing was everything. Now, for this look itself, it's weird. <laughs> This is very performance art. You're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. For me, I'm just like, it's whatever. It's Utica. It's Utica. <laughs> I mean, when this look came out, Afri was like, what the fuck is going on? Girl. <laughs> so I gave it a seven. I mean, she she did the challenge of making her look like Utica. I just, the outfit was just whatever for me. Yeah, I actually really like this outfit. You know, I think because um, how Utica kind of briefly discussed it in the workroom. Um, you know, it's supposed to be the main fabric. Fabric is supposed to be representing the skin, mm -hmm. your skin tone, and then under it, of course, the body suit representing your muscles and things of that nature. Now, I can't really tell y'all about what's going on with the hair, <laughs> but I do like the hair. Like, it's very beautiful, very a piece of art, very visual, very like, it makes you talk. It really makes you talk, and that's what the girls want to do when you're on a platform like this. Talk about this look and talk about what it means to you. So, I gave Utica A. Yes, I mean, good job, Utica. Honey, y'all probably didn't know who this girl was coming out. It says this is a different type of bitch, honey. Motherfucking Utica made over by Simone. Mm -hmm. Bitch, I gave this look a nine. Utica looks so good. Simone said she only painted two faces, bitch. Third time's a charm because Utica's face was a beat, honey. But I can't give all the credit to my girl Simone. Y'all know I stand for Simone. She's my bitch. Utica stomped that shit. Utica looks so good. She embodied Simone, honey. She got, like RuPaul said, honey, she said she got her degree from. Simone Yeah, honey, university. They must have been a PhD, baby. Yeah. A MD, a JD. She got all that shit, honey. She looked gorgeous. And shout out to my girl Halle Berry, because if you don't know, now you know. It's a BAPS reference. You know, representing my girl Halle Berry. Look it up. Girl, yeah. Oh, give him a picture, girl. Give him a picture. No. <laughs> um, yeah, bitch. This look is everything. I get, I give it a 10. Um, honey, the ivory enchantress, bitch. <laughs> yes! When they said that, bitch, I screamed. Um, but yeah. 
the reference, this whole outfit was so cute, and the way Utica served it on the runway, honey, she was giving you supermodel. She, she was, was giving, honey, Ooh. and as much, yeah, like you said, as much as I enjoy her quirkiness, it was nice to see her going down the stage, not like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not like, what girl? <laughs> And I was like, oh, so Utica can walk yeah. like a supermodel. Yeah, and do that because the judges already know, like RuPaul has said many times that Utica has the body and the look and the limbs to stomp this runway like a supermodel. And she proved that for us today. I kid you not, if Utica would audition like she did on this video and show the girls and stomp them like the bad bitch that she is, she would have been at the top of this pack. She was giving very GG good on this. Yeah, uh, very GG good. Now we have Got Mick made over by Candy Muse, and I really like this look. I gave it an eight. I think that she embodied Candy. Now, this was very much like a white girl. <laughs> well, a white girl at the club trying to dance to some hip hop song. It was very like cringy, but at the same time, I think that, you know, she tried her best to be Candy. I do think Candy is someone who's really easy to imitate though. Um, but regardless, I do also think they had the hardest challenge trying to look like each other, cause girl, there's two different sizes now. Um, and I think that she made it work with what they had. What'd you think? <laughs> I hate this look. <laughs> girl, why do you hate this look? I just think it's very basic. Like what did, you know, Candy do that made her look like Candy? Besides God made bringing it and bringing the personality, like this bodysuit could have been on anybody. This hair could have been on anybody. Like when she came out, it's not like, oh, this is Candy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I really didn't like the look at all. And you know, as far as Candy having her moment on the stage, like disclaimer, I stand for Candy and I stand for Gottlieb. But for her having her moment on the stage like that, you're a drag queen. We everybody know. So what? What they would have brought in a 500 pound man, oh. like they have before in the past, and they had to transform them. So let's get into that. But if you bring in an old woman and you have to transfer her. You know what I'm saying? So don't make that an excuse that, oh, God made this this big and I'm this big. That's not an excuse. You're a drag queen. Transform her. Period. They had a lot of feelings about this one. I just thought, I mean, and you know, I do think they did very well on the runway, but I did feel the type of way when Candy had that whole shabagle on the yeah. on the runway stage. It wasn't necessary. They both did well. I just think this looked like, y'all tell me, when y'all, when y'all, when she came out, y'all instantly thought Candy? Because just like Denali said, bitch, you give me tea time. <laughs> That's Honey, now if a Now you give me Tina with the look. Now you give me beat now. You, this ain't no Tina. This ain't never gonna be Tina on Got Me. But this look is very Tina. It's just a bodysuit. Yeah. Um, bitch, I live for Candy's little well, tantrum. Well, not a bodysuit, a leotard. Her little uh, tantrum on the runway. You know, right. I love some drama, bitch. You know, if I'm on the show, bitch, I'm gonna fight everyone just to get some TV time. She does look like a hot cheetah. Oh, period. Now, I know I just kind of drug my girl Candy a little bit, but she, this is her now. Transform by this is Got Mick. Mm -hmm. She looks good. I like this a lot. I gave it an eight. Um, what I love the most about this is that paint. Yeah. Bitch, one thing that Got Mick can do is paint a face. Bitch, she Got Mick could probably do all those girls on the stage, honey. She could have transformed every single one of them, regardless of their size, or regardless of their skin tone, you know, any of that. And so that's why I don't think like Candy's excuse look. I only let me just leave Candy over there. As far as that, but I'm gonna talk about God making how she transformed her. She looks great. I gave this look at eight. Hair looks good. Outfit looks good. Face looks good. Good job. Yeah. Um. I also really like this look. Uh. Um, my only thing is that the out. <laughs> girl, she was giving me a little bit of a jester, honey. Girl. Yeah, she's giving you that whole clown. Yeah. You know, I love the paint. The hair was cute. I wish maybe a different color, just because when you're watching it on TV, it's so damn bright. <laughs> um. And then as far as the outfit, I just. I like it, but I just wish it was something different. Something, something's off with that outfit. I don't know what it is. It looks good. Yeah. Something is missing about it. I just can't put my hand on it. Yeah, maybe if you covered up the titties or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's something is off, but um, overall, I think they did a good job. So I would give this one a seven. Agree. So our honey, Naomi Campbell of the week is our good sister, Miss Simone, who transformed Utica. So just so you guys are very clear again on how we did this, we rated the girls who made over their partner, okay? So granted, this may be Utica in the picture, but Simone transformed her. So now, boom, there's Simone. That is the fashion Nista of the week. Yes, honey, congrats to Simone. Uh, we'll give a little silver trophy to Utica for yes. serving the look. Um, and it was just great. This was, I thought that this episode was really fun. I love this episode. I thought it was a very good idea. Yeah. Now, I, I think it should have been a little more spicy if one of somebody should have won the mini challenge and then they got to choose the pair yeah. of the girl. You know, the, but, the producers were being shady pairing these girls up, but <laughs> yeah. honey, I won't, I won't tell no one. 
Once again, we have reached the end of another episode. If you've made it this far, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you guys are also watching the UK series, don't forget to check out our reaction to those looks. And if you want to see the cute little challenge video where, you know, we gag a little bit, then don't forget to check that out. And I guess don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye, y'all.